Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video. What are we going to be talking about today? Uh, well, it just literally came out, and I was too busy with work yesterday to record a video talking about her. <laughs> but, Castoria is now in the game. So, obviously, if you already know what's up with Castoria, you've already summoned on this banner. <laughs> so feel free to tell me how you did, and hopefully it all turned out pretty well for you. Um, if you're not, and you're still wondering, should I go for Castoria, then this is the video for you. So let's uh, plop down and get right to it. So, Castoria. Um, probably a good thing to mention is that should you summon on this banner just right off the gate, if you don't have Castoria, the answer is usually going to be yes. Um, <laughs> almost 100%. Every box will be better with Castoria in it. Even if you're not focused on arts, really, you can use Castoria and it'll be really good. If you already have Castoria and you want more MP copies, well, is it actually worth getting MP2 of Castoria? The answer, actually, funny enough, is yes, but you can still do everything you can do with Castoria at MP level 1, and they're not going to be like pigeonholed into being it's not going to be a thing of like oh man i really need mine to be mp2 to get this done almost every content that you can think of in the game can be accomplished with an mp1 castoria uh it's just that your unit will be that much better and give you that much more of the invincibility things the higher the mp level is so something to keep in mind uh I, mine is always going to be mp1 because i don't feel the need to go for more i care more about if it ever happens i'm going to be like oh yeah i got a second copy of castoria and i'm not going to be actually chasing it even though it, i recognize it would be very nice to have so there you go if you just want the outright opinions of it now let's actually look at the banner itself because <laughs> there are other units on the banner um now this banner is already out so i'm going to do a very quick explanation for him before i just go straight into castoria so, uh, first of all, there are craft essences to celebrate memories, brainstorming, and filler flowers. This is a 50% starting NP charge and quick and buster 10%, which is actually pretty good. Brainstorming is NP damage plus 15% NP over overcharge level 1 one time, which is okay. And filler flowers is plus 50 HP each turn and damage taken minus 100. Very, very nice art. Which is what you want usually from a bronze CE. Unless it's one that is giving you, um, grind materials. Now, uh, here's another question. Is Celebrate Materials a brand new one? Is it limited? It is limited. Okay. That's what I was wondering. So the other units on this banner, funny enough, it, even though she's not on the rate of servant list here, Vargas is on the banner. <laughs> but she's not on it. Um... Vargas is a really, really good AoE Saber unit. Um, she's an AoE type unit that is not actually super great in terms of looping. But in terms of surviving and getting you the victory in a fight, Vargas is amazing at that. I love Vargas. Uh, I've used our Vargas. Ha I have actual videos of me and my brother playing um Fago, doing challenge quests with the most jank unit teams and Vargas coming in super clutch and being super good and so that makes me appreciate Vargas a little bit more i think actually funny enough if you go back to some of the earlier videos of Vargas, i i'm very sad about the fact that she can't loop but the fact that she's just so good at survivability and um having just the survivability enough makes her really good in challenge quest and plus if you ever do the uh, Grail fronts, um, she's excellent in single servant combat because she's so hard to kill. So she's very good. Bubble Sith, also very good. Um, Bubble Han Sith or Trico, however you want to pronounce her. I always say her name wrong regardless of anything. She's a very good single target quick uh, archer unit. Similar to kind of Bargus, she can be really effective. Like I think the thing that I remember most is that during the raids... Um, people were able to use, uh, Sif to just completely dominate a lot of the raid battles that were up there. Now, was it because she's a very strong single target servant, or was it because they have so many copies of her because both Sif and Bargus are constantly in a lot of banners, so people, and also usually with top tier units like Castoria, Oberon, and, uh, Morgan, <laughs> does that mean you just have an excess of Sif and Bargus? Yes, <laughs> but that doesn't make them any worse for anything. 
I also believe both of them are story locked as well. They're story locked servants. If I look here, yep, story locked, which is like being limited but with extra steps. Um, so Sif is really good and really nice to have. Percival is a really solid, good AOE um, Arts Lancer. There's plenty of uh, AOE Arts Lancers out there in the game. We literally just got a free one with Learning with Manga. If you're someone who's very frugal with their money, uh, obviously Percival is going to be much better at actually being able to do the loop stuff compared to Mary Anning, unless you put a lot of effort into Mary Anning to kind of get, get her across the... Uh, finish line on that one but Percival is a very good AoE unit and I think is worth having I think honestly the, a lot of the Lost Belt 6 units are I actually don't think there's a single miss in the units that come with Lost Belt 6 I think every single one of them is either top tier or insanely good in some kind of way we got Castor Castoria we got Oberon we got Morgan we got Melusane Bargast uh Babu Sif uh Percival Am I forgetting anyone, or is that all the Lost Belt 6 units? No, that should be all of them, and all of them are good, <laughs> so it's very easy to just kind of go like, yeah, it's kind of a nice bonus here. The only thing that's actually an issue is that you actually get a buttload of these copies because they constantly end up on banners featuring Castoria, Morgan, and Oberon, and a lot of people are going to be going for them. All right, now to actually talk about Castoria, which is the reason people are going to go here. I'm going to go over what Castoria actually does if you are curious about that. Because again, I'm assuming anyone who's clicked on this is someone who needs to be told how good is Castoria. And if they have not listened to the beginning bit here, then this is where I'm going to tell them. Castoria, she's a caster unit. She's one quick, three arts, one buster. Her first skill is the Charisma of Hope B. Increases party's attack for three turns, charges party's NP gauge, 20% attack and 30% to NP gauge, and that is on a cooldown of six. Her second skill is the protection of the lake A, charges one ally's NP gauge and then increases party's gener NP generation rate for three turns, 20% uh, NP and 30% to NP rate generation on a cooldown of five. And her third skill is Caliburn, the Sword of Selection e EX. Increases one ally's performance for three turns, art's performance for three turns, increases their damage against threats and humanity enemies for three turns, grants them invincibility for one turn, 50% uh, arts, 50% um, to threat against humanity damage, and the cooldown is six. Uh, her passive skills are magic resistance A, territory creation EX, one's own magic B, and then after you clear Avalon Le Fay, Fey Eyes A. Her third skill is an anti-saber attack damage aptitude, because trust no one, not even yourself. And her noble phantasm is around Caliburn, the ray of hope that embraces you, and on stage 3 it turns into something else, but if you're this deep into it and have avoided spoilers, I won't show it, but it's literally everywhere, but just to look out for you, I won't show it. It's rank A, anti-army, arts, increases party's attack for 3 turns, removes, their, removes party's debuffs, 30% uh, attack at MP level 1, and if you get her to MP5, that's a 50% attack bonus. Uh, grants party anti-purge defense built for N attacks, 3 turns. Anti-purge defense nullifies ignore invincibility and damage based on overcharge. Anti-purge defense attacks at 1, at a charge level 1, you get 1, and if you charge it all the way to 500%, it is 5. Um, and that's Castoria. Castoria is fucking insane. You, it's it's hard to really put into exact words how good she is because when you look at her skills, it's very basic looking, and yet all these basic things, it's kind of like, hmm, what's a good example of something extremely basic but then extremely powerful? It's like. Ken in Street Fighter. You never think of Ken's moves as being anything more than what Ken can do, but somehow Ken is always a problem in almost every Street Fighter game because even though it looks basic, it's devastating when performed correctly. And that's what Castoria is. She's devastating. The MP generate, the fact that she charges party's MP gauge by 30% and that applies to everyone is insane. That means it charges hers as well. So if you have double Castoria, that's 60% going to both Castorias. <laughs> and then combine that with the fact that they have three arts cards and um, you're on an arts focused team, it's very easy to get this Noble Phantasm up. So let's say you're in a grind session. Obviously, in terms of grinding, she's amazing. In terms of looping, 
she's astounding to the point where you only really sometimes need one castoria in a lot of cases like you're good you're good if you're someone who's someone who is very free to play focus and you have tomomo you can use a tomomo and a castoria and yeah it's going to be a little bit of a bummer not having that extra 50 percent but if you build your team good enough and you're with uh, specific units who have high MP generation rate, you should still be able to loop just with those two units right there and you're good. Um, that's maybe the most insane thing is that she doesn't, <laughs> she doesn't actually override the previous support unit that came before her. She joins up with them and just makes them better. Like if you're someone who was like, oh, I use Waver. It's fine. You can use Waver with Castoria. It doesn't matter. Um... If you're using any of the other uh, support units, it's fine, you can use Castoria. Because if you're in a challenge quest and you're like, well, I don't really want to use Double Vich for whatever reason, can I actually just bring in Castoria? A lot of the times the answer is yeah, you can just bring in Castoria, and even though you're losing 50% um, Buster attack from having a Double Vich, or maybe you're not using Merlin, unfortunately, um, but having another Buster support that can give you the 50% there, you're going to be fine because usually if I'm assuming on this case you're not really caring about farming and you're caring more about like a challenge quest scenario. Uh, Castoria not only is amazing in terms of looping, she's also amazing in terms of, of being used in a challenge quest. Me and my brother have multiple videos where it seemed it was actually possible for the jank teams that we created at the last second to work because we said at the beginning let's put castoria here and somehow <laughs> through her amazing kit of very basic stuff that she can do she gets you to the finish line it's amazing all of it looks basic but it's all so amazing that it's combined like this skill alone some units care about like the entirety of her kit some support units wish they had for like one skill and she gets it in all three of them and it's kind of amazing like the fact that this increases the parties and nb generation rate instead of allies is also nuts <laughs> for example a unit that i like to use a lot for nb generation rate and this was before the castoria days was a bride nero because Brian Nero actually has the ability to increase allies generation rate for three turns and it's only to one and it's 45% and then they get 30% NP. So for 20, um, for 10% less NP, it gives the entire party more NP generation rate. So it ends up being that a lot of the times in again, challenge quest type scenarios, you can have NP generation rate go to the entire play, uh, to the entire party, and that lets them get their NP faster. And if you're using your NP faster, you're ending the fight faster. It's all great here. The fact that this ability of hers right here, again, this can be used both offensively and defensively. If you're someone who needs a little bit more, let's say you're on wave three of a loop or something, and I always bring this up, and forgive me if it bothers you when I talk about looping, but again, there's two ways of playing for go most of the time one of them is that you can loop for three turns and the other is you can just play normally so <laughs> if you're going for the three turn loop and let's say you're just that you're missing that much damage you can throw in an additional 30 percent from both castorias if they're friends um because like i said it's very easy and that's an additional 60 percent attack coming from there if you're in a challenge quest type scenario, you're grinding the story, you can use this with anti-purge defense, and you can actually use this noble phantasm as the first one to give a little bit of attack bonus and then go with some anti-purge defense stacks, or you can noble phantasm with the other, um, with the DPS first, and then go for Castoria, and then that way Castoria will give you anti-purge defense stacks here. That's why when I said at the beginning, if you have her NP2, it's really good. The difference between having one of these anti-purchase defense stacks and having two of these can be pretty major a lot of the time. I don't want to undercut the idea of having MP2 because it is 100% without a shadow of a doubt at her at MP2 is better than at MP1. You're even getting 10% more attack. <laughs> like, it's really good. Um, and it's very easy to charge up Castoria as well. And if you do have her, for example, at MP2, and then you're going here, and then you're going upwards to here, it's all just crazy. And it's all, there's so many ways to use her, and so many different kind of team builds that she can just kind of make work around it. Either by making the, be the party better, or making the party more interesting, and you can do it in a bunch of different ways. It's, it's kind of insane. 
Um, even as I say all of this, I still feel like I'm not doing 100% justice over how good Castoria is. Um, so I'll leave it at that. Otherwise, I could literally go on and on about all the different scenarios. Over the years that I've had Castoria, that she's just been amazing in one way or another and even if we discounted the servant itself let's say i don't care about the servant how's the actual character the character is really good too she's amazing in lost belt six she is there is literally no way to look down on castoria she is as perfect of a unit that you could hope for um in Fago, I don't think I've heard of a single person who's ever disliked Castoria in any capacity. They've I've seen people dislike um, Flanderization around Castoria and maybe some of the little weirdness around her release about how um, a lot of her early dialogue doesn't match up with her Lost Belt 6 personality and the reason is is because Nasu had changed his mind <laughs> at some point, I think. Because um, the story was in development when she was being released and stuff. Um... So yeah, Castoria. I would say actually probably if I were to think of a perfect unit, it would probably be Castoria. I can't really think. I've. Mm, it's a little bit weird because I think Merlin at the time was like overboard in a lot of ways, but somehow I just don't feel that way about Castoria. And I can't really explain to you why. I don't know, maybe it's just because back then there wasn't a, a lot of good options. It was either Run Buster or nothing, and now I feel like you have a pretty good chance here of being able to be used in multiple different places. And to be fair to Merlin, you could use Merlin with other uh, types. It just wasn't very good, but you definitely could. Funny enough, that um, original Merlin design maybe goes a little bit more to Oberon. But at this point, I'm talking about other stuff, and we can end it here. I think I've done enough trying to say she's good. If you're curious about if you should go for her, man, uh, it's really tough. If you're someone who is really free to play Focus, I really do think having Castoria is worth... Um, is a long-term investment that you will always be happy for. Because as far as I'm aware of, two years in Japan... Still good. When I summoned for Castoria, even knowing that Vich was on the horizon, it's not like Vich replaced Castoria. It was more that she just joined up with Castoria, and the reasons that you would use the one over the other, it wasn't a full total domination type of scenario, in my mind, at least. So, in terms of should you go for her yourself, if you're wondering, like, man, I just don't know, based off of a lot of things that are coming up in the future of the game... Well, we can look at May. I already did a full breakdown of May, and I'm pretty positive the rest of the stuff in May is going to be coming. Um, there's going to be Constantine, there's going to be this, and like I said beforehand, I, they might sneak in Vich. The fact that they actually brought over that Tamamo banner that was in the Korean version of the game kind of makes me feel like it's we. It, it changed from like a 1% chance of it happening to maybe like a 3% now in my head. <laughs> it still seems like kind of a crazy banner to release out of nowhere, but it is something that's coming up. And then anniversary should be like early July because our anniversary is always around Anime Expo. I've been wrong about a lot of the times beforehand, but I can tell you this right now. We will have the anniversary around Anime Expo, which is going to be early July. So a lot of this stuff is going to be advancing forward. Um, and that also means that we're going to be having to go for summer. And there's a lot of good units coming up in summer. And there's a lot of good units coming. There's a good unit coming up in anniversary in terms of a popular one. So the only reason I would say to not summon for Castoria is that you just care about other units. It's fair enough to say like, hey, I don't really care about Castoria. And I feel like I'm already doing good as is. I'm not going to stop you from playing the game that you want to. All I can tell you is what I feel. And then it's up to you to go from there. Be okay. I think I've talked long enough. That's the video. Thank you very much for watching, especially if you watched it um, this far. <laughs> like I said, I'm late on Castoria and most people have summoned already, so feel free to tell me how you did and stuff like that. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. You guys have a good day and peace out.